Greetings and in this short video presentation we're going to see how we go about installing open bass using a Docker's container. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to update our Kali installation. I've gone ahead and typed in app space get space update and I get this warning about an invalid signature. Well we can fix that real easy. From the lab file I'm just going to right click and paste in the command. This is the wget command and it's going to go out and it's going to get a new updated key. Let's go ahead and see how this works. And it comes back and it says OK. Now we can run that update one more time. And this time it should work. Once we've done the app get update, we can go ahead and do the app dash get upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And in just a moment it's going to come back and ask me do I want to continue. I'll type in Y for yes and I'll hit enter. And once it's done upgrading, we'll come back and continue on with the lab. Once we've completed the update and the upgrade, we can now move on to creating a snapshot of our current configuration. To do this, we just go to the machine and we just select from the context menu, take snapshot. Give it a friendly name and then just select OK. The option to take a snapshot is only available inside of the virtual box. If you need to take a snapshot inside of the VMware, you need the Workstation Pro version, not the free player. To install Docker, we're going to use a script and we're going to build it using nano. So I've typed in nano space docker underscore install dot sh and that's the name of the file we're going to create. I hit enter. I now have a blank text file. I'm now going to copy and paste the contents of this script from my lab file into this blank text file. I'm now going to save the contents of this new sh file that we created by doing a control x then when it asks me if I want to save the changes I will type in y and I will hit enter. I need to next make this script executable. To do this I'm going to do the chmod command space the plus sign small letter x space docker underscore install dot sh. Go ahead and hit enter. And it returns back to my prompt letting me know that the command completed successfully. If we type in ls at our prompt, we can see everything that's available inside of our root directory. You'll see that I have a docker underscore install dot sh file that is colored green. This means that it is an executable. I'm going to go ahead and type in sh space docker underscore install dot sh. I'm going to hit enter and now I'm going to run this script. So we've completed the installation very quickly using that script file. Now we're going to go ahead and check our installation of Docker to make sure that it is working correctly. To check and see if our Docker installation is installed correctly, we can use the following command. We can use the docker space run space hello world command to check and see if it is properly working. And it comes back and it lets you know that from Docker it says hello. From Docker this message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. With our Docker program securely installed, we're now ready to install OpenBAS as a container. In my prompt, I've typed in the following command, docker space run space dash small letter d space dash letter p space 443 colon 443 space dash dash name space OpenBAS space Mike Splain forward slash open bass. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now this is a normal error message. It says it can't find it locally. It looks locally first to see if you downloaded the container, but if it doesn't find it, it just goes out to the Docker site or wherever the download is located and it pulls it down from there. And with that one command, open bass is installed. In this next part of the lab, we're going to see how we go about updating the NVT files that OpenVAST uses to scan your network for vulnerabilities. Now for us to update these NVT files for OpenVAST, we have to be inside the OpenVAST container. So I've typed in docker space exec space dash it space OpenVAST space bash. We'll go ahead and hit enter. In just a moment, we'll have a different prompt. Now I'm up inside of the root of my OpenVAST using this terminal. We're next going to tell OpenVAST to go ahead and connect and update and sync its NVT files 
with the Green Boon server. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see that it's going to go out and it does delete some files and it downloads others. The Green Boon server has a database of over 50,000 of these NVT files. And they get updated and replaced quite often. So from time to time, you will want to go ahead and update your NVT files for your installation of OpenVAS. The next command we're going to use is the OpenVAS MD or the service for OpenVAS. And we're going to type in OpenVAS MD space dash dash rebuild space dash progress. Now this is going to take a little time, so do be patient with it. Now if you don't see nothing at the prompt, just be patient. I had to redo the command and add another dash to the last part of this command for progress. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter one more time. Now again, as it rebuilds this NVT cache, it can take some time, but you just got to watch the prompt. From time to time, you'll see that it does this little turning of a stick, and after it gets done, it will come back to the prompt, but you have to be patient. This next command, greenbone dash cert data dash sync. This command will update and sync the cert database. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And in just a moment, it's going to come back to the prompt. But until it does, do not interrupt it. I type in our next command, which is greenbone dash scap data dash sync. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And again, you have to be patient and wait for the return of the root prompt. We have another OpenVAS MD command to run. This time it's OpenVAS MD space dash dash update space dash dash verbose space dash dash progress. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And again, you're going to have to be patient and wait for this cache to up. This next command is to restart the OpenVAS manager. So I've typed in forward slash etc forward slash INIT period D forward slash OpenVAS dash manager space restart. This happens very quickly. Comes back letting me know that the manager was restarted. Now this next one that we have to run is pretty much the same command, only it's the scanner. So I'm going to go ahead and back this off. And I'm going to type in scanner, X like so. Now I'm going to run this command one more time, and again it comes back letting me know that it restarted the scanner. Now that pretty much wraps up the installation using a Docker container for OpenVAS. Pretty slick, and you save a lot of time. This whole process probably took me just a little over 30 minutes. Even with the updating of Kali and all, it was still a much easier process than trying to manually install and update OpenVAS. If you're wondering, is there a container for Nessus? Yes, there is, but it's very convoluted. And that's because the good people at Tenable Security that make Nessus have not really came up with their own way of handling or working with containers yet. So the script and the updates and everything has to be changed all the time. So that makes it pretty unbearable. So that concludes this short video presentation on how we go about installing a VAS using a Docker container. In our next video, you're going to go ahead and use OpenVAS to perform a scan of your network devices. And I'll see you in my next video.